Hello and welcome back to the workshop. We had a huge response from the where are we going to be in 2024 regarding this machine. We had some fabulous suggestions of where I could get a hand wheel. A gentleman at my local model engineering club watched my video. He rang me up and he said, I may have a solution to your problem regarding said hand wheel. He says, I think I might have one on the shelf that I no longer need. It's not for a bridge port, but you, uh, you can gladly have it. So I said, yes, fantastic. I'll take that off your hands, no, no worries. And here it is, even with a little label to say it's for me. Um, it's a, I haven't got a clue what it, manufacturer it is. It's made in England, Picardo, maybe. I don't know why that, if that's how it's pronounced. Uh, it's aluminium. It's kind of rustic, just a bit like this machine. We were like, well, we might have to do some modifications, bore it out, and all this sort of stuff. <laughs> and I'm quite shocked with this. It slides straight on perfectly. Absolutely spot on. There's no gap, no play, nothing. So I don't need to do anything with it. The only thing I do need to do is put this little, little hole here, this pin. And it should have a pin on here. I'm not going to put this in for now because this isn't even tapped. Uh, I'm going to leave it as just a hand wheel for now, see how I get on. The other thing I'm tempted to do, and they don't do this because the people make these to come off, but what happens is they get knocked off, fall on the floor. I'm tempted to put some form of thumb screw here just to give it a nip to stop it sliding off. That's all. It's not to grip it, to rotate it. It'll just be a little grip just to stop it sliding off, getting knocked off, going on floor and smashing. I could do with the little piece that goes on here next, puts it in forwards and reverse on the uh, quill. But this is fantastic. So thank you very much, Peter, for that. You're a star. Now, strangely, where have I put them? Here they are. This pin hole, pin thing, it's a very bizarre size. 3.87. Huh. The closest is 5.32, which I don't have that, but that's 3.9. So that's a 3.9. That does not fit, so it must be smaller. And I don't have anything. Yeah, I don't have anything that size. I don't even have a 3.8 mil drill. No, I don't have anything. The closest I have is eighth. And the next size up I have is quarter. So we're going to have to turn something down. Right, so I'll turn this uh, bit of quarter down. It's actually silver steel. That should be perfect for the job. So we'll make this into a pin that fits that machine. Right, we'll see what that is now. Right, so we're bang on six there. not brilliant. Silver steel, it's horrible. Right. Really nice finish that. Right, it's coming up out at 3.79, so we'll have that. I'll just uh, put a little file edge on there. Right, I'll give that a try in the uh, hole because I'm going to make that. I'm going to press that into the aluminium, hopefully. Right, so, it goes in all right. 
We'll call that 475 between the pins. I hope you're all loving the fact I'm doing this in metric. We'll call that 12.64. And we'll call our pin 4.78. So if my calculations are correct, the centre of there to the centre of that hole is 13.46, which is close enough to be in 17.32 of an inch. Right, to hold this down now, we're not going to tighten these up too tight. It doesn't need it. It's only aluminium. That's not going to move. Right, let's get the machine set up. I'll find the centre and then I'll, I'll, I'll get the hole on. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. It's right on edge. Well, it looks like we're going to have to put a different hole in the uh, machine. Just don't look, just don't look. We all get a bit nervous there. Looking good, looking good. Now, if this makes you nervous, I probably would suggest you don't look. Because I reckon this is going to make a lot of people nervous. Go and look at this heathen. Perfect. So there we are, there's the new hole pin. Now, what I found is it's quite tight, so I don't think I need the grub screw. So it, it kind of pushes on and it's quite stiff to get off. So I don't think I'm going to worry about grub screwing it for now because it works. And uh, when you turn it, if you can see over here, the handle is coming down. So that is brilliant. But what I have noticed is the amount of slop in that is crazy. So it's tight there. So it's lifting it up there. Right, and then I'll go back. And now it's gone back, back to the tight thread. So that is one. That's nearly a full revolution. So I think we're going to have to look at what the issue there is. There's... I'm quite sure it shouldn't be that much play in it. Now the reason I'm doing all this is so I can work towards getting a more accurate way of drilling holes in stuff. The next stage for this section, apart from stripping that down and checking out what's going on with that play there, is obviously a readout here. I've seen so many different ways of doing it and a big thank you to everybody who put their suggestions forward in the 2024 video. If you've not seen that, go check it out because it'll tell you what we're up to this year. So this here was one of the items that I wanted to do this year, and it's now done. I'm quite happy with that. We'll see how we go without the handle, though. So anyway, the readout that we're going to put here, I'm going to say a big thank you to Chris, and he knows who he is. He sent me some articles on Fitting One that goes 
here, which attaches to these flat bits here, which is brilliant. It doesn't use any of this. I can keep that manual scale, shall we say, which is, you know, always quite handy when you just, you, you want to be near, but you don't need to be that accurate. But he sent me this fabulous article that shows how to fit one using this section here, which is quite flat, and then it comes down here. So that's the one we're going to do. Obviously, I'll show you that when we get there, but right now, I just wanted to get that hand wheel on. It works. I'm not too bothered that there's a hole. I just need that little bit there that pulls that centre out. Fabulous. I'm going to leave that now because I have been invited with my friend to go over to the Steam Workshop. So I'm going to nip out for a bit of a trip and I'll get a little bit of footage hopefully. See you there. We arrived at Steam Workshop, which is near Leeds in West Yorkshire. And here is Simon, the owner, talking to my friend about ongoing project in the workshop. Steam Workshop is also the main supplier for the Holroyd injectors, which are extremely good. Love the little traction engine inside, waiting its turn for restoration absolutely fabulous 9F do love 9Fs and hopefully we got a video on a 9F coming to the channel sometime this year one of the hidden gems in this workshop was this beautiful three and a half inch gauge double furley absolutely stunning yes and it is a working steam model just beautiful something you rarely see and yeah coal fired how you drive this thing with the controls i have no idea with the steam and exhaust blowing in your face but what a model beautiful here is little bear originally built in 1912 and the Steam Workshop have spent the last nine years rebuilding this. And it's absolutely stunning. Just look at that pipe work there. Just wow. They've done such a fantastic job of it. There is a video coming apparently from the Steam Workshop and I'm really looking forward to it. Something rarely seen, a Heisler. You very rarely see one of these. The livery on this, just wow. Absolutely stunning, stunning colour. Now here's one of the lads of Steam Workshop. This is Mark producing a part for this fantastic Thomas II rebuild. Obviously a little bare bones, but it's going to turn out to be an absolute stunner, this locomotive. In their own paint shop, they are painting the body for the Thomas II, which you can just see the cab on the lower right. And finally, this Sterling single, which was about to go for a steam test. So what do we think of that? That was, that was really quite a treat. Big thank you to Simon for allowing us to invade his workshop. Kind enough to show us around the workshop, show us all the bits and pieces, all the fantastic machines, uh, all the models that they have for sale, projects that they're on with. It's Aladdin's cave, every boy's dream, especially if you're a steam enthusiast, is, is a place like that. Uh, again, thanks to Simon, thanks to Mark, John, the rest of the team that are there. Fantastic, cheers for the brews. One thing that I did get a chance to have a little look at some of the pieces that are around the workshop that they have is their two foot gauge Fowler build or rebuild. That's one of my favorite video series to watch on YouTube. So if you've not watched their two foot gauge Fowler rebuild, then go watch it. I will put hopefully a link in the description. With that, thank you very much. Laters.